Hello Scorpio friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my Scorpio April 2024 Astrology Horoscope Forecast. This is for you if Scorpio is your sun sign, your moon sign, your rising sign, or any other Scorpio placement you're listening for, what I'm going to talk about here is part of your astrological picture. And if you're a very late degree Scorpio friend, so birthdays around November 15th through the rest of the sign, or Scorpio degrees like 23 degrees through the rest of the sign, I suggest you additionally listen to my Sagittarius report as your very late degree friends will benefit from both readings. I'm calling the theme of this month full pink Scorpio moon. So you've got a full moon in your sign this month and that's always something very notable to celebrate. It only happens every 13 um, months or 13 moons in the cycle. So, you know, that's kind of a big deal. So we're going to talk about that, but we have so much more to talk about too. We've got a massive amount of energy in Aries. It's the astrological new year now. Things are going to be very, very, very feisty. We also still have lingering energy in Pisces, which is really great for Scorpio because it makes that beautiful angle for you. We've got the eclipse, the second eclipse this month. So we're going to talk about all of these things. And besides that, we have this epic once in 84 year, conjunction with Jupiter and Uranus. We're also going to talk about that. So we've got a lot to discuss. So let's see, let's start out. We may as well just start out with the full moon and then we'll get to all of the other things. So in the days around April 18th, we've got a four degree pink moon. It's called that not unfortunately because it will look pink. I know everyone will wish that it is. That would be super cool and otherworldly, but it's actually named after a wildflower called phlox that is the farmer's almanac would associate with the moon at this time that the flocks would start to come out, you know, in, in the area that people were working this out. And so it's called that. So maybe the moon will elucidate these beautiful pink flowers in, um, in you know, a field or something, but that's probably the pinkness that you're going to get from this. So fullness, completion, fruition, drama, the completion of a 13 moon cycle the beginning of a new 13 moon cycle. All of these things are happening and they're happening in your sign. We know that fullness, completion, fruition, drama, elucidation, the hidden things being illuminated, things that had been secret coming to light, things that were within you bubbling out for better or worse. This can be a time of massive drama or this can be a time of massive manifestation. When we have a full moon, we know it's going to be emotional for better or worse. It could be the best of times, it could be the worst of times. When we also know that it can bring water where it's not supposed to be. You know, the tides will rise, pressure increases, and sometimes pipes burst and all of these different things happen. And when it's in a water sign, that expands those possibilities. So definitely be on the lookout for water, whether it's literal, like pipes or ocean, um, or whether it's figurative, like emotional um, energies, being just out and about everywhere, but there's definitely a lot of intensity. So things can come to fruition that you have been working on for a really long time. Things that were in your inner world can start to bubble out. If you have to align the bringing out of something intentionally, that may be better for into May, unless it's a short-term thing or a small project, because we are in Mercury retrograde. So April 21st through April 25th, we do have that energy going backwards. Um, March 20th, we started to get in that flow. It will linger until around May 14th. So it's not necessarily the best time to plan a launch or plan something coming out but it could be amazing for creative expression. So if you have been trying to tap into your creative faculties or you've been working on a creative project or something that you've been trying to coax within yourself to come out, this could happen at this time in very wonderful ways. It can happen in not as wonderful ways too. So if you've been repressing something, then just be extra careful because you know this is, this is a lot of intensity. You can use this energy to reveal and release. I like to call it a time for reveal and re release ceremonies. And actually you can search for Annie Botticelli reveal and release full moon Scorpio. And you can find my blog on this topic where you actively try to ask for your subconscious mind to reveal to you blocks to things that you're working on. And this full moon energy and the bringing out of things, you can use it consciously to try to get information from deep within you that can help you in any area of your life. If you have a problem you need to be solved, if you have a health mystery, if you have a block in a you know a relationship pattern or a money pattern, you can ask for all of this. Now on the topic of money and relationships, of course, Scorpio rules both of those things. And so anything involving Scorpio, inheritances, sweepstakes, shared money, spousal money, debt, um, investments, you know, loans, all of that can, can be coming up in a very big way. 
So you may have to have some very emotional talks, things that have been swept under the rug tend to come out when in Mercury retrograde time. And this could be, you know, a time where discussions or things have to be looked at and evaluated so that you can move on from them. But in any case, it is a time of great intensity. It's a great time of great opportunity. And it's definitely very, very, very important, especially for you as a Scorpio. We do have other things to talk about. One more thing about this full moon before I move on is the degree. So it's four degrees. That means anyone with four degree placements. So if you know your chart, you can look to see if you have any four degree placements. If you're watching for your birthday as um, being a Scorpio sun, then October birthdays are going to get more intensity from this. Um, and the closer to around October 26th, you know, the more a direct hit is coming from this. So, you know, I'd say all October born right there, early November born, you all will be, you know, really, really uh, getting extra intensity. But the rest of you November born don't feel left out because there is so much here for everybody that I don't think that you'll be disappointed with the potentials just because of the sheer intensity of it. Anywhere near this event is going to be, you know, full of possibilities for sure. Okay. So, we're working with eclipse season. We had the lunar eclipse at five degrees of Libra on March 25th. We are still in that web. Manifestations for relationship changes can happen in this period of time. Um, specifically, you know, for Scorpios, this was in your house of the unconscious mind, um, addictions, fears, gold within you coming out. So all of those things are still happening. And then the new moon, April 8th, 19 degrees solar eclipse. That is current. I will be doing, um, you know, I don't know if you've been watching my work for a while or not, but recently, since Pluto has gotten in Aquarius, I've been shaking up my Pluto and Capricorn usual um, presentations here. And I've been actually posting every week for the first time um, ever since I can remember. I don't even know if I've ever done that. So you definitely, um, just a quick housekeeping note here to not miss anything. Subscribe and click the bell if you're on YouTube because that will put me right into your feed and you won't miss anything because I've been posting a lot of stuff right when it's happening. I am still posting these horoscopes early and if you want them and all of my other creations super early, you can search for Annie Botticelli Secret Star Portal and you can subscribe there and you get everything super, super early. Um, so those are possibilities. But in any case, this solar eclipse is all about independence, autonomy versus this Libra eclipse, which is about relationships and connecting with other people. So we've got this polarity here that's very rich, very alive, very, um, you know, active for your relationship space, relationship with yourself, relationship with others. And it's happening in your sixth house. Not only is that happening, so not only is the eclipse happening in your sixth house, which I'll get to what that means in a moment, we also have the sun in Aries in your sixth house. We have Venus just a week into April getting into Aries in your sixth house. We have the transiting North Node there for a couple of years. We've got Chiron there for like five and a half years. We've got Mercury retrograde there for the whole month. So you've got an inordinate amount of energy in your house of work, employment, your daily routine, your um, physical health, your routines, you know, as to to related to your health, like supplements, exercise, things like that, your pets, anything that gets tended to every day is basically this, this energy. So if you're looking to shake things up, look for things to be shaken up. And again, for better or worse, these many, many, many Aries placements are making what's called a quincunx angle for Scorpio, which is an angle of, of awkwardness. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be bad. It is awkward and it does make you basically kind of snap out of any emotional abyss you may go into and take action on certain things, especially involving your daily work, your habits, your routine, your organization. You can go through a whole shakeup in your organizational structure. And many of you might be realizing that you have not been super efficient with your time. And this can help you to become super efficient with your time. This can help you to reprogram your whole way of doing anything and everything so that you can get more done in less time and so that you can revitalize your daily routine. If it's become stagnant, if it's become a drag, if you're bored and you're not excited, this is probably going to bring a lot of changes to your daily experience in work and at home. So you can look out for all of that to happen and, you know, it's definitely very intense, but it is very exciting. So all of this Aries energy will bring you 
to want to do something. It's ambitious, it's motivating, it's inspiring, it's active. But we've got Mercury in retrograde. So what happens when you have those combinations? Mercury in retrograde, we're not supposed to try to forge forward and force things to happen. This is the stay on the shore and let things roll in, you know, onto the beach for you to deal with kind of thing. Like I always say, either a dolphin comes and says hi or garbage rolls up, but whatever it is, you're not trying to put your boat afloat in April. You're seeing what comes to you and you're dealing with it. You're dealing with the squeakiest wheel. You know, anything that is most pressing is what you're working with, not the things that you've been trying to push forward, not the whole big visions and the whole, you know, big thing. You're dealing with what comes up and you're leaving the space for that or you will get frustrated. Big key note at this time, because Mars rules both Aries and Scorpio. So we've got kind of like a lot of Mars energy. And if you're trying to make something happen now and it's not working, you could get very frustrated. So to protect yourself from that, if you make the commitment now, which is why I'm telling you now, that if you're trying to push something and it's not working, just step away from it. There are things that need you, and it might not be the things that you have an agenda for. And when you align with doing what has to be done rather than, you know, trying to force what you are trying to do, then you will have much less frustration. But it definitely looks like your health and your wellness routine may need a big new regeneration, you know? So either there are health things to find, maybe there are health habits that you know are not good and this is a time where you could have a wake up call or someone near you could have a wake up call. This also can rule like people close to you, but also like office people or people that you see at yoga. So there is the possibility that something could happen health wise to one of these people that serves as a wake up call for you to say, oh gosh, I guess I better manage my stress or oh gosh, I better stop eating so many, you know, um, saturated fats or whatever habits that you know you've been getting away with or maybe you've been drinking too much or doing, you know, partying and then someone overdoses and you say, oh my gosh, that could have been me. And you get this wake up call um, through the shakeup in your environment and it wakes you up into the fact that you really need to take action on it. That could be the kind of thing that happens. And I do see that a lot with this sixth house. Okay, so this time is a time where karmic clearing is of, you know, a major importance. Now you've just gone through recently this, Scorpio Taurus eclipse cycle that was from the end of 21, 2021 to the end of 2023. A lot of you are still reeling from that and dealing with the profound changes that occurred. This one is, this cycle is not targeting you unless you have other placements that are connecting in to the Aries Libra energies. But this is still a time for regeneration and for a cleansing out of karmic perspective. So you might notice that a bunch of stuff that was a problem it's not a problem anymore or a bunch of stuff that seems under the surface is coming up to deal with you know but this is a time where you can clear through old patterns very quickly which is very exciting okay so we still have a lot of energy in pisces we've got for the first week venus is still there we've got mars there all month in april and so this is bringing water emotion intuition introspection which really matches the retrograde this aries business and the eclipse business does not match the retrograde right that's all forward moving make it happen active but this pisces energy is introspective and retrospective just like the um mercury retrograde energy is so we've got these dueling forces and you'll see them coming up them both coming up but this is all working out really well for um, Scorpio placements because from the end of March through the end of April, every Scorpio is going to get a kiss from Mars. So that motivation, the ambition, the oomph, the feistiness, the drive to do something, especially creative things, because this is accentuating your house of creativity. This can also be commanding fun. If you've been working really hard, this could be a time for you to let loose. And it may be that the health things that you need to do are to relax, and this can be combined with the letting loose, you know, with this fifth house. A trine is the most favorable aspect in all of astrology. So getting a kiss through the form of a trine from Mars. And um, those of you towards the end of the sign, you'll also be getting your Venus kiss. Those, the rest of you who aren't at the end of the sign, you got your Venus kiss in March. So, you know, everybody's getting it. It's just staggered a little bit. So, you know, nurturance, love, money, relationships, comfort, and then Mars is coming and bringing the boom with you know your action and your activity. And then those beautiful trine formations. And this is also your bucket list house, I like to call it. So fun and hobbies, creative spirit. It's definitely a time full of opportunities with um, you know your creative sector. Okay, so the next thing, yes, okay. So 
One other housekeeping note. I've noticed that I, I make playlists at the end of YouTube and I link these things underneath the podcast as well, but I, I've heard that people are having trouble navigating, especially in the mobile view of YouTube. So I've created a page where you can find my current and upcoming astrology and my um, podcast versions all in one place where you don't have to navigate through all of the weird um, YouTube advertising and stuff like that. So if you go to anniehelpsyou.com forward slash astrology, both of those playlists will be there and constantly updated where you can access all of the things that I'm posting weekly for the current and upcoming aspects. Okay, so I just want to tell you that while I was thinking of it. And if you're subscribed to YouTube, make sure you click the bell. Okay, so the next thing is this Jupiter Uranus aspect. This this, okay, so Jupiter and Uranus get together once every 14 years, but they get together in a sign, you know, in a sign every 84 years. So this is a once in a generation aspect. I, it's a big enough thing that I'm going to do one, maybe two reports separately on this because it's so big, but I want to speak a little bit about it here because it's very important. It's happening April 20th and but we're really feeling that very strongly for a full month before and a full month after. So definitely the end of March, well into May, we're feeling this. Jupiter expansion, Uranus, lightning strike, innovation. When we look back to periods of time where this happened before, we've had major technological breakthroughs, major medical breakthroughs, major, major futuristic breakthroughs in every area of life. And we will see that globally at this time. But you, this is also your own personal revitalization um, uh, portal as well. So, you know, anything having to do with your material systems, doing things, Taurus, because it's in Taurus. Um, and specifically for Scorpio, this is actually happening in your house of relationships. So new ways of existing in relationship, new ways of getting help from people or setting up your service-based um, work. Those kind of things can definitely be revolutionized and it's very exciting. If you have to implement something new, you may want to wait until we get more into May to kind of get out of the, the um, eclipse madness and the retrograde madness, but certainly ideas and opportunities may start coming in now. So this is also very notable specifically for Scorpios because this is opposing your sign. This is in the sign of Taurus, which is 180 degrees opposite to you. So math is at the basis of everything. We, we've come to see this, right? We even see the golden ratio present in the distance between the um, you know, planets. And it's just, it, it's basically math is the skeleton of life. And it's also the skeleton of astrology. So when we go through deeper la layers of astrology, we see that angles, mathematical angles that planets or placements or transits make will activate different types of things. So an opposition makes you feel like you're pulled in two different directions. This is the me-we profile, which is also the same thing that's being aspected by the eclipses me-we, except this is through the house, the first and seventh house. And so this has to do with, you know, again, reworking your relationship to yourself, your relationship with other people, revolutionizing ways, you know, using technology to improve your life and your relationships, all of these things can come up. Now, all the Scorpios will be feeling this with extra intensity, but those of you who are close to 21 degrees, you will feel that the strongest. So that's going to be the days around November 11th. Because this is such a mega transit, I'm taking it seven degrees in both directions. So like 14 degrees through 26 or 27 degrees of Scorpio placement. So that's basically like November 4th through like November 4th, no, 18th. November 4th through November 18th or so, you all will be getting the most intensity the closer to around 11, 12, the 11th or 12th, you know, that's like the mega, the mega connection here. Or if you have any other Scorpio placements near 21 degrees, you'll be getting hit with this. For better or worse, you know, this is a major rare aspect. It happens sometimes once in a person's lifetime and, you know, it's fully usable for a long period of time, um, which again, I'll be talking about in other reports, but it's just important for you to know these layers now. Okay, so go to anniehelpsyou.com. You can sign up for my free VIP um, community. You can get the welcome letter from that. Put your name and email address in there. Get the welcome letter. Click on the archive link. Look for April 2024 astrology. Find my list of aspects to be awareful and careful of, my sweet and salty list, and my write-up for the month, plus all kinds of things. I have astrology lessons in there and there are archives, there's just so much, and it's all free. You can access my secret star portal there at anniehelpsyou.com. So when you click on, 
Unleash, you can go to the VIP community. When you click on Upgrade, you can go to my um, Secret Star Portal, which has my written horoscopes, which has all early access for my public um, reports and almost two years of archives of evergreen material. You can find that there. And if you want to learn astrology with me, you can take my basics course or my astrology certification course. Um, and I can help you to make money doing astrology and or just help yourself and your family and friends with this amazing self-development tool. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.